Hello everybody and welcome to the Terraform Homestead. For those of you who are new, we are an off-grid homestead in the Arizona desert teaching natural building skills. Today we are working on a new project. Today we are putting together our pump house. So water is sacred out in the desert. It is our most important resource we have and having a, a place to store, collect, filter, all that kind of stuff was extremely important to the community. Up until this point, we have just been toting 30 gallons at a time from town once a week. This is a great video to show you how we take basically reclaimed, salvage stuff that people were gonna throw away and turn it into a beautiful work of art that is functional for our community space. The materials we use in this project are largely from our property. Our clay, our sand, our straw. We get reclaimed bottles, taking control of our own trash and turning it into something beautiful and make a shell for this pump house that is going to last a very, very long time, is built sustainably and is built by hand. It's very DIY friendly. If you guys have any questions about this project, about our community, about anything we're doing on here, feel free to leave a comment below. We answer all of them. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy this episode. Grow your garden, find your tribe. Let your heart's burning side move your body towards the light. All right, so Katie and I and our workwear have been cranking all day on uh, this is our outdoor shower. The only things we had to buy for this were the concrete the screws and the shower pan, which shower pan I actually got from Habitat Resource. So all of this is scrap salvage, reclaimed wood. And Katie, do you want to give us a tour of the bathroom? We want to do like a saloon type door here. They could be fun with swinging doors, but door will be right here. There'll be like little covered changing area. We'll have a half wall here um, for the shower with the shower head in the corner. Um, and so you'll enter on the shower right here and you'll have another wall right there. So yeah, and it's all, it's right next to where it's going to be our pump house as well. So, and what's really cool is this is added rainwater collection because this is taller than our tanks. So we'll end up running some gutters. Uh, we got the framing done today, which is exciting, the door in. Um, tomorrow, I'll be getting the rafters to go up here. Uh, decided to do, I think, probably a 12-foot rafter, so we'll have a nice little overhang here, decent one over there, um, and that's just going to give us a little extra water collection and hopefully kind of look cool. day five working on the pump house and we are just about done with the shell so i'm very excited still have some touch-up stuff to do i gotta fix a little gap in the door trim a few things but we're pretty much done with the structure now eventually what we'll be doing is doing a pretty thick layer of cob over this so that will one it's free materials we have everything we need for it out here and two it'll help insulate it for the winter this is still our outdoor shower area we've got this temporary screen up just until we get the final boards and metal up and the next big project for me is the plumbing so i'm gonna try and figure this out probably tonight or tomorrow um, but to give you guys kind of an idea of what's going on in here, we've got uh, 5,000 gallons worth of tanks out there that will come up this pipe to a shallow well pump. That goes to our pressure tank. That comes out to, we have three filters. 
um, sediment filter, carbon filter, and I think this is a five micron filter. Then that shoots out to all of our appliances. We will have a laundry machine in here, which will be great. Punch through this wall to get to the hot water shower head. Um, the shower will be on the other side of this wall. Uh, spigot down here somewhere for people to fill up um, drinkable water. And finally, we will be trenching from this hole to the tiny house, to behind the big house, to the greenhouses. We finished up trenching, um, so the place looks a little crazy right now, but it will all get put back together this next week. Uh, we did a lot of earthwork today and finished that stuff out, did a little cleanup on some trenches. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna show you guys what we've been working on. So I'll take you guys over there later. That's where we have kind of our little orchard set up. Uh, we dug out a ton, a ton of dirt from there and basically dumped it all in here to kind of help make a raised path. Uh, so that way when water does flow through here, it kind of keeps the path fine and keeps all the water in with the mulch and everything like that. We've had a bunch of blowouts here, most storms, so now that we raise this up, I mean at least two or three inches higher and that the whole thing is covered, I can't foresee us having any more water issues here. The big project that we worked on today, about three, four hours, something like that, was this in here. So this is gonna be our like mini orchard sort of thing and you can see basically where the dirt line was here on this guy uh, was the top of this this was all level before and so what we did it's got the trencher in there which is all loaded up now and ready to go back and dug this out i would say somewhere between you know six to 24 inches depending on the area basically all the water from the road filters down here into this little speed bump uh, berm that Katie made. Keeps it from going to our house and just fills this up. So this is gonna be like a big pond whenever it rains. Got holes dug for four trees. So one, two, three, and four. We're gonna get some mulch in here, get this soil amended. This half of the, the road filters to here. This half of the world goes down kind of right here and into that spot so this will fill up as well and then overflow into here which overflows into the rest of our earthworks so really cool we're trying to build up this environment as much as we can and just you know a couple people with a few shovels and a weekend rental of uh, some heavy machinery and it's uh, really changing the landscape out here which is really cool. All right, so got a little bit of work done today, getting the drain lines in. This is kind of the drain lines to the main house, uh, which will go up here. And then this all comes down from the tiny house. And basically this is all gravity fed. So any rain we get on the future main house, future garage, and our current tiny house uh, will come through these lines. Got this kind of set up. This is our first flush tank. Um, we also use it for watering the garden and all that kind of stuff, watering all the trees. Basically when this fills up, it goes up to this first little valve. That second valve up there is uh, for our garage eventually. We'll come down, flow downhill all the way here, down, and then we'll have a pipe sticking up here and going into that main tank. So we'll be able to officially collect rainwater in the next couple days. We don't have enough roof square footage to actually fill up the 300 gallon tank but once we do we'll be able to start collecting stuff so pretty cool just got all of this scrap metal cut to size so this was all stuff we got for free and we're getting closer to a functional outdoor shower so we got all the walls up which is really cool i like the way it's looking it's pretty much 100 percent um, scrap recycled reclaimed free materials we've got our door here this is temporary for now uh, it'll get replaced with kind of a saloon swing door sort of deal. We've got the shower pan. This was a habitat restore find. Um, I still need to plumb it and run our gray water out here. We've got all of our metal in, which is super dirty right now, but once we get pressurized water in here, we'll get this all nice and cleaned up. Clear roofing, and then all of this is pallets. So this was kind of a fun project to work on. Just seeing what we can do with salvage, um, getting something made 
for next to nothing. And what's really cool is we get a beautiful view while we're taking a shower. This is my full garb for the next probably three weeks um, because yesterday we were introduced to what is called biting midges or no -seams. And they completely destroyed my legs today. This sucks. Um, this is the worst thing we've had so far, but um, just gotta wear long sleeves and a head nap for the next couple weeks until they die off, I guess. Show you guys what I got yesterday. So this is about a hundred bucks plus probably another 30, 40 bucks worth of parts to get it fixed. But this is a uh, solar water heater. So really exciting. Doesn't require any electricity, doesn't require any moving parts. Out here we have plenty of sunshine today. Um, so basically this will get mounted on the roof of that. Um, <clears throat> kind of got it taken apart right now, but as you can see in there, there's these little wing flaps um, that are black and metal. So the water goes in there, heats up, and then just works like any other hot water heater. Got the water heater done. Uh, we just lifted it on the roof to four of us. Very difficult. It's a solar hot water heater, so there's the little panels inside. Um, I rigged it up with PEX fittings. So basically this PEX will come in and out into the little soffit here. This will be our input, and then down there will be our output. And that will do the shower and the laundry machine. All right, so I've been working on this for a couple hours now and making some visible progress. So I've got most of the stuff hooked up from the pump. Uh, just one little piece missing here. Filter system set up, so this is a basic sediment filter, I think 50 micron and 5 micron, something along those lines. And basically three stages so that the water we have collected will be pretty well potable, pretty safe to drink. My filter bypass here, so this is when changing these filters or having to do maintenance, I can shut these off and not spray water everywhere. Come over here and this is our cold line that will come down. It'll punch through the wall here and go over that way. A couple more trips to the hardware store and we're all hooked up. I've got to now work on the tanks and get those two tanks connected, but I think everything's good in here. So pump comes over to this thing, pressure gauge, all that. We've got our um, pressure relief valve here that shoots to the outside. It comes up filter system here. This comes up, goes out to our hot water heater, goes down, comes back in. Uh, we have a split right here for the uh, laundry machine that'll go in here eventually. These two come out here, um, take you around, out to this back, which this will all get insulated and sealed up uh, once everything's tested and running, into our shower. Which I'm really liking the way this is looking. We just got basically two little valves here, and then that comes up to our shower head. So uh, one thing different I did on this was this is actually a dishwasher shower head, so you have to squeeze it uh, to get water to come out. Um, the reason I did that was to help save water. We've got this line that comes down and comes out here. So this will be spigot to fill up water for everyone and buckets and stuff. And then I've just got a ball valve on the end of that guy and that'll eventually shoot out to there. I have to get basically all the water pumped out of this one um, and into this one. And then I'm gonna be working over here. So this one's already set up. You can see it kind of drops down. This one we've had temporarily set up. So I've just got to connect these two pipes, two tanks open it up and then the water gets into the pump house so right we are all hooked up um, i've got just a temporary electrical line going in right now so we can kind of plug into this outlet and that'll shoot electricity to the water pump getting started and about to test it out so beautiful having running plumbing actual pressurized water we are cobbing and rocking our pump house so this is a project i wanted to get done last winter didn't happen 
getting it done before this winter uh, because we're getting the big crew out here for the winter to start on the big earth bag house. Um, and so I want to give people basically an indoor shower to use. So we got all these rocks, big, big, heavy rocks from uh, the wash and that kind of came in through the next storm. So you can see I've kind of got our first row laid out. Basically, this is going to act as our foundation. You don't want rain water uh, collecting on that cob when it's dripping off the roof and all that kind of stuff. So by doing a couple layers of rocks, we will have a good solid foundation to keep the cob off the ground. A lot of people do earth bag full of gravel, but I think this is kind of cooler looking. Um, I think it's going to be easier because we don't have to sift a ton of gravel. I've got my first course laid out all the way around. Now what I'm going to start doing is packing these joints full of cob mixture. So what cob is, is a mixture of clay, sand, and uh, straw. And so we've got over here this beautiful clay that is from camp area about 100 yards that way. Our sand, which also came from our wash, um, and then the straw, which I do buy the straw um, just because it's already kind of pre-chopped. This is going to be an experiment for the big house, so I haven't done glass bottle walls yet, but kind of the loose idea on this side, which is where most people see, is that we'll do kind of rock and do a cool corner feature here, and then do some glass bottles and kind of a spirally sort of situation there. We did add in an extension to the roof to protect the cob, so before the roof just kind of came uh, right up to the edge of the building. Uh, we got last week this edge up. I got these really cool corner pieces donated from a very kind lady in Bisbee that was moving the gutters up, um, which is something that I really should have done pre-monsoon season, but such is life. Uh, right now they're into a temporary water bin here, and this is just kind of catch what we can catch. We're still getting some rain. Yeah, eventually these tanks are gonna get buried over here and then that'll go directly into our tanks for drinking water. For now, this is great for our cob mixture. I'm gonna do an experiment, so I'm actually adding a little bit of cement or concrete um, to the mixture. Just, I'm just curious what happens. So doing one bucket of clay, two buckets of sand, and about half a bucket of uh, concrete per mixture. Work's coming front along pretty well. I've got three of the sides done-ish, maybe two and a half. You can kind of see how it's gonna end up looking. So we've got kind of the rock at the bottom as the foundation, and then gonna cob, you know, maybe four to six inches thick all the way up. I think up here, we're gonna cut out that piece of OSB and do some cool bottle stuff. Just, this is kind of an experiment. I like doing small scale projects before we do kind of the bigger stuff. So if they all go to hell and screw up, you know, not out a lot of time or money. One thing I did do here, which was a good catch, and I'm putting a few vent holes underneath here. And I was thinking, if this gets wet, it is a pump house, if water gets under there. That's a place for mold. So I'm putting three of these four inch vent pipes. I'll put some screening material over that to keep bugs and mice and stuff like that out. One thing that's nice about this last rain is it brought me a brand new sandbar. Load it up. You can see this looks a little bit chaotic, but there is a rhyme to this reason. I came in and started marking off kind of where the bottles are going to go. So the idea behind this is that we are going to cob in these bottles and then basically drill through each one and put a couple of little Christmas lights in there that'll be powered from the inside on a timer. So those this whole thing will kind of light up at night and look really cool and added these plumber's tape. I don't remember what they're called, conduit hangers or HVAC hangers. And basically what this is gonna do is help secure the cob to the wall. So since this cob is only four or five inches thick, it could probably stand up on its own, but with it being a square building, 
only four or five inches thick. I wanted to kind of give it a little extra reinforcement. So these will just get embedded in the cob when it dries, become rock solid and just kind of help everything, you know, stick to the wall a little bit more. The other thing I did was I got the table saw or tile saw out and started cutting bottles. So I got probably about 100 bottles cut. We're going to do a mix of these green, yellow and um, clear bottles. I want to give you an update on the Cobb pump house shower setup we got here. Uh, so you can see we're probably four or five feet up. Um, the bottles are coming along really nicely. I got a timer for the Christmas lights that are behind here so that glows really cool at night. Went into a YouTube spiral last night. I want to do this as an experiment to see if we can use this later on. Is doing an earthen flooring here. I'm really excited about that. It's basically cob with some cement in it. Task for today is to get this all cleaned out and get these bricks out, which I'm not looking forward to because I can 100% guarantee there's scorpions and spiders under here. So that's going to be really fun. We've got some cob going up, so we'll keep these shelves in here, but then cob the rest of it and cob all this. Eventually we'll have bottles all along here. Starting on this wall, so basically I'm going to do rock and concrete here. Give it a cool, nice little edge. I think eventually we'll concrete in this basin. This is looking pretty cool. I just like kind of rinsed it down with the shower. I pulled out a lot of this aggregate from the concrete and then I mixed in um, just I have a jar of like really cool pyrite, granite or quartz. I really like these bigger pieces of like really cool rock with the aggregate from the concrete gravel. Um, really happy with how this is coming out. Got it almost first layer down so got that back half tamped getting this in and then it's just a matter of leveling it first layers down i got it all smoothed out Where we're at is went to dry fit this door and now I'm stuck <laughs> because we're jammed the door in and now I can't get it out and I'm screwed. So um, yeah, I'm just, just keep it rolling and I'm just going to fight with this for a little bit and see what happens. So where we're at, got the door up. This rock is in the way, unfortunately, and I don't want to cut more off the door, so I'm going to sit here and chisel for a little bit.
tried to chisel a rock, that didn't work. Um, tried a jigsaw, because I think I can just trim off just a hair of the door and it's not going to be very noticeable. Um, jigsaw didn't work. Bigger tools now. <laughs> Good morning, good morning everybody. We're out here working on our pump house. So it's been a minute since we've worked on this, but this upcoming weekend uh, we're doing our plaster workshop and I had a master plaster come out and that's going to be hosting the workshop for us and just did some prep stuff. What she was saying was basically our cop job was not very good, um, which I'm not surprised. This is the first time doing cop, like on a big build like this. So the issue is all of our cob work is all wonky and wavy and stuff like that. So my project for today is to get this leveled out. So we're kind of taking two approaches. You can see here, um, we're doing some patchwork to fill in some of the low spots. And then on some of these high spots, I'm coming in with my power grinder. So this is a new blade that I got intended for wood carving, but it's doing a wonderful job on this cob work because we were trying to carve it all out by hand and chisels and that was taking forever. So angle grinder it is. Plaster Hawk um, that was given to us, and I uh, was told that was like top of the line stuff. So we kind of reverse engineered it and made a bunch of them. So here is our cement mixer. You can see the new guy, the one that was about six months old. They take a lot of wear and tear out here. The issue at this one is our switch broke. So this fell over the other day when we were doing the patio and our switch broke, which is really annoying. Honestly, I don't love the way these are built. They are inexpensive uh, for what they are. And this one's lasted, I mean, uh, hundreds of thousands of pounds of dirt in it. So I can't complain too much for a $250 mixer, but one of the big design flaws I find in it is that your switch is on the opposite side of your lever. So it's usually good to like dump it and then turn it off, but you have to run around to the other side to turn it off quickly. So since the switch is broke already, I'm going to do an experiment here and see if I can run a new line that goes down underneath and uh, is a switch over on this side of the mixer rather than on the opposite side where it's really awkward. So we'll see how this goes. All right, so I opened this up. I was a little intimidated because um, this was a very big box. So I didn't know what I would find inside. It's a simple little switch, you know, white, white, black, black, green. So what I'm gonna do is pull this wall apart, just completely disregard this box and run some new conduit along that side there um, to get it all mounted up. This is gonna be a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be, which is never happens out here. to test this guy out. So 
Rewired it, got the switch over here. It's just this normal outlet switch, metal box, da 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 da. Run the plug out, let's fire it up and see what happens. Yeah, it's not encouraging. unnecessary amounts of energy and it doesn't make the plaster look any better so once I get that amount say it's a big I usually apply like a bigger square and then I take horizontal I go horizontal and then here, there's parts where the plaster didn't fill so I'll go back with my little bit of mix and fill in those and then smooth out. I don't usually the bottles because they're a pain in the but we're gonna, the same technique, except you're gonna, you're, the jiggle is really key for me, kind of like work the plaster in, and we'll just go right around with the best of our ability. It's like icing a cake. And then also something that I forgot to mention, always keep your your hawk underneath where you're working. So you catch the plaster that falls. Plaster always falls, it's totally fine, but we don't want to waste it. So what is the reason for going top to bottom? Reason is uh, when you apply from the top, you're not messing up your previous work. It's also like, in the beginning of the day, you're, you have more energy and it's, you, you, it's harder to work high for me personally. It takes more energy.
Hello, hello everybody. We are out here on our final plaster day for the pump out. We're getting our plaster coat on. It's been about a month since we got our first coat on. Um, we're gonna be doing the color today, which is gonna look really, really nice. Just cranking away on this. Um, it's a lot thinner mix, which is nice. Um, so I'm hoping it goes up pretty quick. We're just gonna put the hop to the wall and we're gonna start at an angle. And then as we go up the wall, we decrease the angle. And then don't do that, but. Um, and then when I apply again, I'm going to overlap what I've already done. And Hello world, wake me up to another good, good morning, time to go. Got that smile upon my face, cause there's excitement in the chase, this I know. Yeah, I'm going for the ride, and by myself I am alive, and I soar. Still I run towards the wind, and let the challenge draw me in, cause I want more. We got people on the wall plastering. Uh, what I'm gonna be working on right now is getting our color mixture. We have all these nice earthen pigments. Uh, we have a little selenite powder. Not big into woo-woo stuff, but it's supposed to be good vibes. Got a bunch of different colors. We're going for like a dark gray green. These are kind of our test patches of color. See, these are horrid. So we're going for something more like this, a kind of dark brown green-ish color. Hello, hello everybody. We're back out here working on our pump house. So we've been poking away at this over the last week or so since we did our last finished coat. We ended up putting three coats of this color on there. So it's all a natural pigment. Now, as you can see, it's looking real, real nice nice and dark and beautiful. So what I'm working on right now is testing out a couple of different things for our rocks. 
what I would like is our rocks to be a cool statement piece um, and really show off that rock work because it's a lot of work. And so um, I did a couple tests, wasn't really happy with it. Now I'm trying another product. So you can see our rock work here is kind of bland. It doesn't really stand out, which is kind of a bummer. These are a couple test patches in the back of the building that I've been trying. This top one here, I used Thompson Water Seal. You can see it didn't really do anything. And honestly, it just kind of got dust clump to it. These second rocks here, we use linseed oil. It darkened them a lot, but I'm not really going for that look. So what I'm trying now is this wet seal, wet look sealer. It's meant for concrete. Alright, so we got our first coat of the wet seal on these rocks, and it's not quite as, you know, bright as I thought it was going to be, but that's okay, it does add a little bit of life to these. I think we're going to do another couple coats on the front and side, and call this guy good. This is our slacked lime. Basically, uh, this is type S lime. You just buy it at any big box hardware store. Soak it in water and mix it really, really well the first time you do it. And then just keep this topped off with water. And the longer it sits, the better. There's mines or uh, tubs in Japan that are several hundred years old uh, with that lime. And, you know, I don't know why, I don't know the science behind it, but if anyone does, feel free to comment but yeah the longer it sits the better it is the harder it gets so we got about 300 pounds put it in this trough that we had lying around and just keeping it topped off because we have you know our main house will get lime plaster or little hybrid over there over there will get lime plaster or little tiny house sheds a um, bunch of stuff good morning everybody we are back out here another day final day of pump house build. We we're so close. Everything pretty much on the outside is done. Uh, we have a few little touch up paint, things like that, but not a super high priority with all the other projects we've got going on. Today my project, clean up the build site, wrap this project up. We still have some things to do on the inside. I'll take you guys around and kind of give this project a wrap, but kind of how things work out here is our county permitting gives us three years to build the exteriors of whatever we want. And then they don't check the inside. So since we have so many projects going on, we typically get the outside done, get the inside functional enough, and then move on to the next project. So I'm gonna take you guys around. If you've been watching the series, you know this came from very, very modest means, very scrapped together shower. Last winter, we didn't have even walls up that were totally enclosed. So it became a very cold environment. Now we are all sealed up and functional and happy. So what I've noticed about this that's been nice is our dark color on this as actually like soaking up a lot of heat. So we were already getting like little heat waves coming up and out of the roof. That clear roofing basically makes this kind of like a greenhouse. So by the end of the day, this thing is just radiating heat and it's kind of acting like a little mini sauna, which is really nice in here. So we still have a lot of work in here. Um, as you can see, we still need the plaster, still need to do clean up in here. Still need to, I'm gonna do a concrete countertop for this little sink. It's plumbed, uh, or at least the line is run. I just need to actually get that all set up. We do have electricity in here, which is nice. Um, so we do have some lighting at night, put in a bunch of kind of weird fun stuff. Getting this ready for plaster by putting up that chicken wire. Uh, the nice thing is now we have hot water in here. Uh, we have our little shower head. And one thing that I added in here that is important because we get a lot of people coming from the city that are used to infinite amounts of water is a pull tab. So you actually have to pull that down to get the water to come out. That just creates some mindfulness of people's water usage and uh, saves our water bill a little bit. 
as I mentioned, a lot of scrap reclaimed, so stuff like that, including our door. We will probably do another coat of paint on both of these doors just to clean it up a little bit more. I do need to hook up our gutter. So I'm hoping before monsoon season hits that I'll take these tanks and drop them in that hole back there. That way we can collect rainwater off of this structure. We're already collecting rainwater off of the tiny house. And then this is a project that we just started last weekend. Um, it's about four days in. This is our new workshop. So we'll be able to collect rainwater off of that, giving us in total, I believe around 600 square feet of roof. You can see we've got our hose for our hot water heater our vent, or bottles. These were a few test spots. Our gray water actually all comes out underneath this hump and waters these trees. I think our pomegranate died over the winter. He was too small, but such is life. But our two juju bees are doing really great. So all of our laundry water and our shower water gets reused. We use only biodegradable soaps. We have our clothesline over here and, you know, solar powered wind powered dryer basically and that mounts into the actual structure itself one thing i really like is having these hooks that actually slide onto the line so that way people don't lose clothespins all the time because everything just blows away and i don't want to keep buying clothespins this is the guts of it you all saw this under construction and our little laundry machine, which is always really nice to have. Our pumps, pressure tank, hot water heater, all that fun stuff. And then with our light up, you can see here, all this is is the shed and some Christmas lights. That's all run off of a timer. So it kicks on about sunset and turns off about midnight. It makes a really beautiful piece during the winter. We do have a little heater over there that's on a temperature sensor. So if it gets below 40 degrees in here, that'll kick on. As soon as it gets to like 43 degrees, it'll kick off. That way we're not using a ton of power and it keeps everything sealed. Also with the mass of the wall and that dark coloring um, prevents our stuff from blowing up in here and freezing. So um, that's really nice and yeah. So I want to thank you guys for watching this series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are enjoying these series, be sure to subscribe. We've got something new coming out for you next week. Uh, we do videos every week, post them, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, as you can see, our bus, um, this is our workshop uh, that we just started on, our hyper adobe tiny home, our main home is under construction. We've got so much going on right now. I hope this video is inspirational to you. If you enjoyed it, like it, share it. That's really how we get noticed out here. Thank you guys for watching. Go build something cool.